Then Donnie goes before the judge. In a good juvenile court, this is not a trial, but a quiet hearing conducted in a small room. Only Johnny, his mother, and the probation officer are present. The judge has studied the reports of the probation officer, the doctor, and the psychologist. And after talking with Johnny, Mrs. Marvin, and Mr. Benton, he reaches a decision. Well, Johnny, you're in a pretty serious situation. This isn't the first time you've stolen things. I can send you to the industrial school till you're 21. You know that, don't you? But I don't want to do that. But we believe, your mother and Mr. Benton and I, that you can make good without being sent away. So, I'm going to put you on probation. Mr. Benton will be your friend and supervisor. Now, we are going to help you all we can. But it's really your job. Will you try? Good. Mr. Benton, I want to know from time to time how Johnny gets along. And so Johnny is placed in the hands of a probation officer, a trained caseworker to whom the boy's problems are a challenge. The first step in planning for the boy's future is to become acquainted with him, to find out about his interests, his ambitions, his feelings about himself. At the same time, he begins to win the boy's respect and friendship. He must find a way to change Johnny's attitudes, to make him want to do the things which will bring him greater satisfaction than he has found in misbehaving. Benton has a talk with Johnny's mother, helps her to understand the needs of an adolescent boy. He asks the welfare agency to give financial help and assist Mrs. Marvin in making the home more attractive for her children. As the months pass, Benton sees Johnny frequently, sometimes at the community swimming pool. Johnny loves to swim. In the winter, Mr. Benton persuades him to go out for the school basketball team. And he is successful in getting him to go to church again. Sometimes they meet at Johnny's home where his willingness to help his mother is evidence of a new sense of responsibility. Discovering that Johnny's greatest interest is airplanes, Mr. Benton arranges with a friend of his who is a pilot to have Johnny meet him at the flying field. It was a never to be forgotten experience for the boy. He was actually able to sit in a plane and have a real pilot tell him about the controls. Benton uses Johnny's desire to be an aviator to persuade the boy to better his schoolwork, for a pilot must have at least a high school education. He introduces Johnny to the public library where the boy devours books on aviation, and to the boys club where he learns to build a model airplane in the club shop. This is fun, fascinating. Johnny has found a new world, an ambition. The gang is forgotten. He's looking ahead to the things he really wants. Intelligent and friendly guidance has accomplished what mere punishment could never do. After a year on probation, Johnny is again brought before the judge. Well, Johnny, Mr. Benton tells me you don't need probation anymore. You've made good. <laughs> I guess you won't steal any more automobiles, will you? See, that was... Dumb, wasn't it? It certainly was. <laughs> but we're all very proud of you now, Johnny. And I want to congratulate you. And so Johnny's probation is successful. His case is typical of the everyday achievements of good juvenile courts. Proper facilities, a judge who understands children, and carefully chosen probation officers can achieve the same results in any community.